You've probably seen a dinosaur on display at a museum, but did you ever think about how it got there? My favorite dinosaur is a Guaricho Shinya. It's named after me because I found it. My name is Akiko Shinya, chief fossil preparator at the Field Museum in Chicago. My main job at the museum is to prepare fossils. Basically, removing rocks away from the fossils and expose the fossil for the research purpose. When scientists dig up a dinosaur fossil, it's usually stuck inside pounds of hard rock. Every fossil is different. Uh, sometimes fossil is very fragile, so you have to be very careful not to break the fossils while you're um, extracting fossil from the rock. Sometimes rock is really, really hard, so you have to pick the, the right tools to knock the rocks away, but not breaking the bones. Smaller fossils are more difficult. It's more detailed. You have to be very careful. In 2017, Akiko visited Antarctica for two months with an international team of scientists. They were hunting for dinosaur fossils from 200 million years ago. It was very, very cold. I had lots of layers, so I was like a marshmallow, puffy. Antarctica is more than 90% covered by ice today, but that wasn't always the case in the past. Until about 45 million years ago, the continent wasn't covered by ice. It, in fact, had forests and had animals living in them, much like other continents. Akiko and Pete were looking for fossils of these animals on their icy expedition. Fossilization process is a geological process where the animal dies, get buried quickly, and lots of pleasure is applied. In the meantime, the chemistry of the bone is replaced by some other materials to be a fossil. There are two types of fossils. One is a trace fossils, and the other one is a body fossils. Trace fossil is something that animal left behind, such as footprint. Body fossil is an actual organism turned into stones. Most of Antarctica is covered in ice up to two miles thick. To find exposed rock with fossils in it, the scientists had to head more than 12,000 feet up Antarctica's Mount Kirkpatrick. They camped on the banks of a frozen river nearby. It's dangerous to walk across the river to the mountain, plus it's time consuming. So we have helicopters every day that can take you from spot A to spot B to spot C. That's what we commute. It's challenging because it's high altitude, so the air is very thin, and it's challenging because it's very cold. In Antarctica, we use chisels, uh, hammers, and rock saw to take the fossils out. You make a little bit of a trench around the fossils, and then the idea is to use a chisel and rock hammer to pop the fossil out of the ground. The fossils are transported back to Chicago, where Akiko's team carefully removes any rock that's still stuck to them. This process can take years. There is a lot of people involved in doing everything from preparing fossils to preparing for field work and doing the field work and doing the research. Once the fossils are clean, scientists can study them more closely. We now have a variety of fossils from Antarctica from different periods in geological history. We ended up discovering a couple of new dinosaurs, small skeletons of juvenile animals that turned out to be a new species to science. Some of the coolest are not even dinosaurs at all. They're closely related to frogs, so they're actually crocodile-sized amphibians. The Field Museum used these fossils to create an exhibit. It's visiting cities across the United States. That means more people will meet these ancient creatures, all thanks to scientists like Akiko and Pete.